Hi, I'm Michelle Malik and you're watching In The Special. Now, plastic is one of those things that exists everywhere. It's convenient and it's cheap. But it is also deadly, from plastic bags threatening marine life to the chemicals seeping into the soil from which we grow our, grow our produce. The insidiousness of plastic is widespread. The situation is so bad, in fact, that the UN estimates that by 2050 there will be more plastic in the oceans than fish. With all the alarming facts and news we hear about plastic, on today's show we take a closer look at whether or not we are doing enough to fight against it. Joining us for this discussion today is Ms. Elvia Mne, who is a project leader for a plastic-free future at Greenpeace. She's joining us from Laroca. We're also joined by Mr. Michael Stephens, Director of Symphony Environmental Technologies, joining us from Hertfordshire. Thank you both for joining us and welcome to the show. Elvira, now let me begin with you. Just give us a sense of how much of the pollution we see today is made up of plastic. How much of plastic contributes to the mess we're seeing in the world today? Thank you for having me. Um, well, we just have to think about some of the most staggering figures and the estimates that we have around us. Um, we know that up to uh, 12 million tons of plastics enter the oceans um, every year. We know that we've got more than 50 billion uh, trillion particles in the oceans, and that's just like um, one part of our of the planet where we are actually seeing the most impact. We're not talking about the rest of the environment, rivers, lakes, uh, mountains, everywhere in the environment. We also see um, plastic pollution. And also what we can personally see when we go out on the coast or to enjoy um, some marine environments, right. we also have to consider that it's just on the surface and most of it is, is still like on the seabed. Right. Now, uh, Mr. Stephens, now let me go and talk a little about how this plastic that we're seeing all around the world is being processed. The technology, is it keeping up with the systems needed to recycle it, to make it uh, if friendly to the environment? A single plastic bag can exist in the environment for over 450 years. Why aren't we tackling the situation in a more proactive manner? Yes. Well, we, we are uh, tackling it in a proactive manner, uh, and our company in particular uh, has scientists who've been working for 20 years to find the solution. Now, we've heard uh, from the other contributor about the problem. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think we all know about the problem. We're told about it just about every day. What we're not told about is the solution, and the solution is what we have invented. We have invented a kind of plastic which is perfectly serviceable, but if it gets out into the open environment, it quickly turns itself into biodegradable material, ceases to be a plastic, becomes a biodegradable material, and is then recycled back into nature by the bacteria and the fungi that live out in the environment. Right. That's now, the solution. Right. Now you're talking about this technology. How are the costs uh, working in this? Because the reason why p plastic is so widespread uh, and why it's used is because it's so cheap to produce. And the fact that producing another time is cheaper than actually recycling it. What are the costs like of your technology? The costs are very low. Um, we use ordinary plastic, and all we do is we add a very small 1% um, um, catalyst into the ordinary plastic. So the cost is negligible. But if, on the other hand, you're going over, as it seems that this Lambert bird want to do, uh, to plastic made from uh, food crops, mm. we'd say two things about that. One, it's four times more expensive. I really don't think the people of Islamabad will be very pleased to pay four times as much for their plastic bag. Worse than that, um, that kind of plastic is not designed to degrade in the open environment. It's designed to be picked up and taken to a composting facility. Right. And it will biodegrade there. But you don't have these composting facilities, do you? Coming back to while you were explaining the science of the biodegradable uh, products to me, one thing that struck me was that the fact that you were explaining it to me, it made sense. But most people don't have those explanations around. What needs to be done to make information more accessible? And how do you think that would change uh, the concept regarding these materials and how they are used? 
Well, um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to thousands of people through your program. And this is the way we want to uh, inform people. Uh, we hear a lot, and we've heard some more just now, about the problem. We're not hearing enough about the solution. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say two things about what we've just heard. The plastic soup in the oceans, if people had been using our technology 10 years ago, we would not have these plastic soups, and we would not be finding plastic particles in the Arctic because they would have degraded and biodegraded long ago.